Well, our free agency got out of control pretty quickly, but a big day of moves here. Saquon to the Eagles, DeAndre Swift to the Bears, Josh Jacobs to the Packers, Aaron Jones to the Vikings, a whole lot more that we can talk to. Jacoby Brissett to the Patriots. I don't know why that came to mind, but that was one that happened too. So what are the worst ADPs now with these free agent moves? The first big news drop we've had that actually has consequence that's going to affect ADPs. Let's find out. I have, I'm, of course, already in a draft room, an underdog. 200k to first place in this one and uh the usual free agents rookies available in the draft of course and we've been trying to plan around it for a while and i don't even know where to start with this one uh honestly i could probably just do a roll call of of all the players who move that are of note uh i'm just going to read the fantasy life newsletter of course it was ian hart it's doing it not our pal pete Overzet. uh but we'll be uh, certainly a lot of names to note here. Josh Jacobs, a, a quote unquote four year deal. It's basically a one year deal for him uh, getting paid. A, I think just the franchise tag. So interesting to note here for most of these guys, uh, last year, the franchise tag was 13 mil this year. Basically every deal ended up being around 12 ish to 13 mil. So basically teams just paid these guys around what the franchise tag was, but not even what the full franchise tag was. So still not a great cosign, even though you're seeing all these big running back values it was not the great running back free agent contract renaissance. that I think uh, the, Adam Schefter's of the world, the the agent puppet guys out there who want to make you think that, you know, whatever the agents are saying, they want these guys to report it and have it have the authority to make it seem like they're doing a great job. Running backs, even though they sign fast, they sign fast because they wanted to get as much money as possible, as fast as possible, and as much money as possible, not as much money as it was for everybody in the past. So one thing to keep in mind. Uh, the other thing, Saquon Barkley. Uh, Saquon Barkley, so the big push here, the expectation by why the Eagles uh, went his direction was that they've seen teams like the Niners with Christian McCaffrey. I think this is Matt Harmon who put this theory out there, but I've seen a few other reporters out there talk about it as well, that they've seen the Lions push their chips in on Jameer Gibbs. And as a result, they think, hey, Saquon's our guy. I don't get it. Uh, the Eagles are a team that analytically we think is pretty sharp. We talked enough about Saquon in the past, and I'm going to do it again. I feel like I have to keep beating the drum because it just continues to blow my mind that people think Saquon is this elite talent as though it's five years ago. Negative 0.2 EPA per rush, negative 0.2 EPA per pass, 11% avoided tackle rate. Um, he's going to get a lot of volume. We know that, but not a great player. He's not going to be the guy. I take a pick nine. Uh, the guy that I take a pick nine will be Amon Ross St. Brown at a slight discount. We saw... Bijan Robinson going, I think a little bit of love coming Atlanta's way now that Kirk Cousins officially going to Atlanta. Four-year deal for him. Gets another 100 mil guaranteed for himself. He's now made $440 million in contracts in the NFL, which is pretty crazy uh, for Kirk. A guy who's like drafted as the backup to RG3 initially. Uh, so for him to have this run out for a contract, uh, Kirk Go Chains thriving here and uh, going to get some nice Atlanta chains, I'm sure. Wow. Is Siki to the Bengals today? Uh, interesting. So I did not see that one. Obviously, we're going to get some free agent signings here that break throughout the course of the stream. So uh, probably not going to be as consequential ones, maybe, as the ones we had yesterday. Uh, we need to keep talking about those. And there's a lot to talk about here. So I'm going to be jumping around even more than usual. Um, other free agents to note, Barkley of the Eagles, we talked about that. Three years, $37.75 million. A little bit more of a guarantee for him than a Josh Jacobs. So Good situation for Barkley getting that much money. Still think he's not that talented. Still think he's going to be losing those one-yard touchdowns. Probably not going to be terribly involved in the pass game either. Jalen Hurts has not created a good receiving running back in a while. So I don't get the move. I think it's an awful move. I think they could have saved a lot of money and gotten a comparable player. They went for the brand name. And once again, after last, you're going to get DeAndre Swift, a Philly local guy. They don't get, get another Philly-ish local guy in Saquon Barkley. You played at Penn State. I was grew up, I think, an hour outside of Philly. Um, it's it's very stupid, and it's also very Philly in a way that fucking drives me nuts <laughs> about having to live here. Um, one wide receiver is what we've taken so far. Nothing so far has upset Houston. Houston actually pretty quiet. Uh, they lost one of their defensive stars. Besides that, not much of note for them. I will be going Nico Collins way here in a zero RB build. All right, team so far, Amon Ra, Nico Collins. Other free agents here, uh, DeAndre Swift, Tony Pollard, uh, going to the Bears and Titans respectively. Tony Pollard, very duplicative of a guy like Ty J. Spears. So not a good situation for Spears, but frankly, Pollard wasn't better than Spears last year. So I think it's kind of a break even for Spears. In terms of this, you know, the assumption that he was going to get the role. I never fully assumed he was going to get the bell cow role. Thought he had a shot to be a lead back and probably a, a 15 touch capacity. Now we're probably looking at, 8 to 12 for a guy like Ty J, 15 to 18 for Tony Pollard, though there have already been some acknowledgments that Tony Pollard is going to be better if he has less touches on his body. So um, 
I, I think the situation overall for me with Tony Pollard, not the biggest believer. He took the money. That was the best contract offer he had, which hey, he should do. Uh, Titans are going to be committed to running the ball, but now it's not. Neither guy, you know, echoes to a Joe Mixon, who was the guy that Brian Callahan's relied a lot, you know, on Cincinnati for the last few years. So I'm kind of confused by the move for the Titans really overall, but we do see Mixon in the pass get a lot of pass game work. So that could be something where you see a lot more pass game work going Pollard's way. But I kind of think that Pollard and Tide are going to play similar roles and really they end up playing like a lot more similar opportunity than people think. But we will see, of course, later in the draft if Tony Pollard's ADP comes up. Uh, DeAndre Swift to the Bears gets a three-year deal. Again, probably the first contract you guys saw come along in the news alerts. So uh, definitely a priority signing for them. I still think he's going to run into the same issues. I don't think this means that Roshan is dead. I do, do think it could mean that Khalil Herbert gets cut, uh, which would not be a great thing for him, especially at this point. Um, but there are still a good amount of free agent jobs out there potentially for running backs. I don't think Khalil Herbert would get one of the best ones, uh, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on there. Roshan, though, still probably a better goal line back uh, then a DeAndre Swift is with what Swift got paid. You'd expect him maybe to give him 20 touches a game, but it is still a situation for that team where Swift has now been in two places where they did not want to give them meaningful goal line work. Philadelphia didn't want to do it. Obviously they had Jalen hurts and Detroit didn't want to do it because they'd rather give it to the dusty old Jamal Williams. So I don't think it's the greatest cosign on DeAndre Swift's goal line ability. I'd still be willing to take, uh, a Roshan kind of like we did last year with Tyler Algier, where Algier paid off pretty well for his ADP going in the 150s to 160s range. That's probably where Roshan should go. He is still a young back. He still has upside. So um, I think that's perfectly a good pick to take once he falls in ADP. Don't take him where he's going right now. Uh, Drake London goes a pick 29 here. So Drake London, again, a big upgrade for him with Kirk Cousins. Uh, the thing that Crack Rock actually had reported, the uh, – I would say, is he a former best baller now, but now he hangs out with NFL owners in some capacity. I don't know. You guys probably know more than I do, uh, but did talk about how um, Arthur Blank was apparently at some rich guy golf club type gathering. It was talking about how uh, they wanted to try to make the Falcons more like Minnesota to have uh, Drake London be their Jefferson, to have Kyle Pitts be their Hawkinson and to have somebody Bijan be their Dalvin cook. I was, I was, I'm trying to think like what it would be now, but um, I guess for Minnesota to be their Aaron Jones, the point being is they wanted to consolidate that offense more, actually see their star players get fed. That was a big choice of why they went with Kirk Cousins. So I think taking Drake London pick 29 uh, works for me for sure. Uh, all right, we have Amon Ra, Nico Collins, Malik Neighbors. I still like here. ATM, we've seen enough of the bad signal. I don't know why his ADP hasn't dropped from the fact that they've outright said that they do want to uh, use Tank, Tank Bigsby more next year after they kind of tried it and aborted it this past year. I'm going to go Malik Neighbors here. Metcalf, I don't mind. Metcalf, though, the bad news for him is he's not going to get the extra bump that could have been possible if Tyler Lockett left. Uh, Tyler Lockett renegotiates for a two year deal. So, um, that was one that we talked about yesterday a little bit, but uh, for me, Metcalf, I think we can get him cheaper now because of the fact that Lockett is back. So I'm going to try to drive Metcalf down, even though I do think um, he should be getting the Romo Dunze treatment in terms of the opportunity. Also, I thought Nolan was already a member here, but uh, Nolan, welcome to the family. OMG here on the screen. He's drafted the seven hole, drafted fun young players. There, I'll, I'll put the hat on. I feel like I fucking have to put it on. Of course, if you join Splash Play, I have to embarrass my Italian ancestors by doing a vaguely racist stereotype of our people. But welcome to the family, Nolan. You do a great job, and you make me say, oh my God, as though I were Usher at a strip club grinding away. Oh my God, Nolan. Thank you for your support i'm so tired of being sick guys <laughs> it's really that i feel like i haven't felt the pain of being sick on stream as much as doing the italian voice and i just have no steam for that uh with the sore throat and mucus carrying on travioli about to be buried by avalanche like travioli one of our more enthusiastic uh newer drafters here popping in every room i am in lately so we'll see what he does this Brees hall jonathan taylor start but as you can see uh we in this room have one two, three pure zero RB starts going all wide receiver. We have some other here that haven't done running back either, but still have gone some heavy wide receiver. This one, three wide receivers. So a full avalanche for sure in play for this one. Welcome to the family indeed. Welcome to the family indeed. Too many casual drafters unaware of the ETN FUD news. Well, I don't think there are any casual drafters at underdog right now. I'll, if there are, I can't imagine they're more than 10%. I, I see the same names in every draft. Obviously, that's splash play. I get it. But like it's badges in every draft. It's like, I don't think we are at the casual point of things. I was actually reading some Reddit thread yesterday where somebody was 
I was the Barstool Reddit talking about how I, uh, Trill and Coley are doing another podcast over there. Of course, after having done one on Barstool and then had a show canceled by Underdog uh, that made somebody have a mental breakdown. Um, let me make my pick and we can extrapolate on that. Um, 0-0-3-0. We do have to T. Higgins potential upgrade. Um, he could go somewhere else. He go back to Cincinnati and we could be perfectly happy with that. Amari Cooper, again, I still think needs to come down a little bit more because of the fact that Jerry Judy being there is not a great thing overall. I'm going to go T Higgins here. I just having the out that T Higgins could go to Carolina and get 10 targets a game is still something that matters to me. Uh, point being the Barcelona people were talking about underdog and they were like, well, what's the point of underdog? Like best ball people, what play that for two weeks and they never do it. And that was like an upvoted comment with like a hundred people replying or whatever and giving it votes. So, um, I think a lot of people out there still view best balls like this very short frame of time thing. And, and frankly, a lot, maybe they should, because the best window to draft is going to be late August where we're drafting teams here in January and February and March, but that's not plus EV. Like the most plus EV time is when you know all the things. Um, so I do think a lot of people out there still like, especially the casuals, uh, they are not even close to being in the world <laughs> yet. And, uh, definitely not in the world. Like we are, we're doing drafts here every day. Of course, Monday to Friday, 11 AM here on splash play. But for all you guys out there, you probably are doing your own drafts every day. Every, I assume. So plenty of no, well, also no badges doesn't necessarily mean they're not regulars too, but yeah, look, fair enough. Fair enough. But I think it's still, uh, you are greatly overstating casual usage at this point is what I would say. Maybe semi-casuals who like play DFS or something and then they play a little bit of best ball, but you're not getting like the guy who does an office league in March. I, I don't think that's very likely. 66 watching, 16 likes. Please hit it. Yes, I agree. Again, splash play is my my jam here. It's the only thing I'm doing right now. And a fucking A, man. I uh, had an investor meeting for probably canceled this afternoon for reasons that were beyond our control. Uh, so I'm like, just, I'm going through it, man. It was up till 2 a.m. anxious last night. So your guys' support on here does matter a lot. Again, trying to grow Splash Play, showing up every day. I also show you what I'm going through. I am a startup founder. I've tried to get Splash Play off the ground at the same time. It's not easy, man. In addition to just prepping for football every day, being prepared to talk about the stuff intelligently, and also trying to do premium things for you guys. Still working on the SPAGs rankings in the background. Uh, now that we have free agent moves, a lot of things are going to have to be changed there. Um, so definitely a lot coming up here and your support does matter a lot here. So you as an individual person, really, especially for a channel this size, you hit the like button. And, and if, even if you fucking hate the stream, you think I'm an asshole, just don't hit the dislike button. <laughs> like those things help me out a lot here in this journey to build a sustainable ecosystem for myself. Put in the work, right? You put in the work, eventually it pays off. That's the hope of best ball. It's the hope of everything we do. Uh, teams around here. Nobody really doing anything that interesting. Romo Dunes, a wide receiver one for Travioli. Bold move. Bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it works out. Because the dominance of zero RB and the influx of good wide receiver talent in the later rounds of the draft, the board is really shaping up to create incredibly strong, hyper-fragile drafts. Uh, you're saying for running back? I mean, that, that's the thesis, I think, that I've been comfortable with all along. Top seven at running backs really good. Um, especially to the Rams, by the way, Kyron Williams, they have invested in more big bodies up front for the Rams. They want to run the ball. Um, definitely possible. They still take somebody, I think, to ease the burden on Kyron a little bit, but Kyron's going to be a bell cow and he's going to get you probably 20 touches and two to four red zone touches. Uh, so to me, Kyron, again, still undervalued to pick 14 with the fact that he was probably the best pure rusher in the NFL last year, besides like a Keaton Mitchell in a small sample size. Zach Moss is smashed now. Yeah, he's been a guy that we've been taking a little bit here in the hopes that he would get a good run out as a potential cheaper signing, and he got it for the Bengals. He's a better version of Joe Mixon, I think. A little bit less good in the pass game, which is a good sign for Chase Brown, but both Zach Moss and Chase Brown have utility. Both guys, I think, uh, a little bit undervalued for their ADPs. Uh, 0 0 4 is what we have going here. Really not that excited about this pocket. A little bit excited about the idea of Brian Thomas Jr., though. You can make the case I could have taken a Pacheco here. I mean, at this point, Pacheco has held off some of the free agent signings that could have really dinged them. Uh, Eckler being one in particular. And I didn't finish reading the free agent stuff. So other free agent signings. Devin Singletary to the Giants. Uh, I don't really like that move very much. Uh, Singletary took the payday, though. He had to do it. Best move for him would be go back to Houston. But, you know, that is what it is. Also, Eckler goes to the Commanders. Don't really get that one. Uh, definitely a team that's going to pound the rock. They've talked positively about Brian Robinson. Eckler, you'd assume, gets some pass game work as well as potentially a shot to steal goal line work. Um, 
I don't like the fit though. Uh, I think that's kind of a weird move and I'm surprised Eckler didn't wait for a better situation or more money. Uh, but again, these guys were worried about getting musical chaired out of any contract. So I, I get why they, they kind of ran to the podium. Antonio Gibson to the Patriots does nothing for me, but it does hurt Ramondre. Ramondre should probably come down to the 100 range, I would think. Uh, he's still probably going to be the lead back, probably still going to get the goal line work, but Gibson's going to take the PPR points away, which matter more in DraftKings. An underdog, it's still half point PPR for Ramondre. Like he's going to have no floor if that team isn't passable on offense. So Gibson to me, um, Probably underdrafted right now in the late 190s, but not a sexy play. Um, Zach Moss, Zach Moss's ADP was, we took him yesterday in the 170s. Uh, he overall was going in the 157 range. Probably has to come up to the 140. No, he's, that's, that's low. He's probably coming up to the 110s, and I would think Chase Brown maybe settles around that same range. Kind of a, a Roshan Khalil Herbert pairing, but a little bit higher, I think would be the guess there. Uh, but let's make our pick here. We'll talk about the rest of the free agent signings as we go. Zero, zero, five, zero. We do need a running back. And the ones that we passed up are still here. So I think that works pretty well. I'm going to go. Ooh, I'm not a big Kenneth Walker guy. But I am going to go. I'm going to go Kenneth Walker. Ambiguous backfield, but we're getting Kenneth Walker 11 picks after ADP. So a mild value hounding there. Team so far went zero RB to start with Amon Ross, St. Brown, Nico Collins, Malik Neighbors, T. Higgins, and Brian Thomas Jr. The LSU teammates reunited only on this one squad on Splash Play. Uh, Kenneth Walker, our running back. That is our team through six rounds so far. Sure seems like Jaden trending to Washington, made in New England, or trade up like Las Vegas or Minnesota. I where, What's making you say that? I feel like I've felt the opposite way in general. Um, but I don't know. Uh, maybe you saw something I haven't seen. Uh, don't think there are any sure things. Legendary upside is real. Yes, it is real. It's a real YouTube channel, a real website. You can confirm that. Stags is rookie fetish. I took two great rookies who tested, well, one of them tested really well at the combine. I don't have a rookie fetish. I have vets around them. To Kenneth Walker too. Rookie fetish, not rookie fetish you. Shout out AR. Sorry, Spags ahead of time. Yeah, AR goes 52 to chunk the deuce. There you go. No issue there. He was not part of my portfolio here. Not what I was expecting to get anyway. Drake Bagel an offensive rookie of the year. He's swimming uphill there. Uh, it's possible, I guess, if he lands on the team with the best weapons. Um, if he goes to Washington, probably the best shot, I would guess, because they're going to run the ball pretty well. He has McClure in there. He's got weapons around him. Um, I would imagine they're going to do something at tight end to make that a little bit better as well. Um I think there's a shot, but Caleb's going to be naturally better. Chicago's also really planning around him. You could tell big money at running back, um, probably a draft addition at wide receiver as well. Uh, they have Cole Komet. They paid him big last year. They got DJ Moore. That team is set up for Caleb Williams to come in and throw for 4,000, 5,000 yards. Uh, and I think he can do it as long as he can stay healthy and he's not going to run as much as the other guys. So uh, I think that is one that I would be perfectly okay with. But I think in terms of rookie of the year, it's Jaden Daniels. The running ability going to be there a little bit more reliably. We talked about it a lot in the show, but Drake may stop running uh, the year before the draft was running a lot more the year before last, uh, probably because he could set and said, Hey, I got to keep myself safe for this contract. Uh, Jaden Daniels went balls to the wall, ran over 10 times a game. Even Caleb Williams ran seven times a game last year, just under that. So uh, these guys, I think, you know, uh, I'm a little more, a little more into Caleb and Jaden Daniels based on the analytics and the will, I think. Drake may kind of got lazy and just did deep balls last year, which is okay. That's still positive for fantasy, but um, I don't know. He's, he's like, he's my least favorite of the big three, but you guys probably know that at this point. After yesterday, what running back will start my zero RB range? Uh, I wouldn't hate Aaron Jones doing it though. Aaron Jones really got to have some questions about Minnesota's offense moving forward. Uh, just because of the fact that like, we don't know what they're going to do at QB. And now they are kind of losing. I mean, they're going to do Sam Darnold, I guess, to start the year, but I just don't know if they draft JJ McCarthy. I don't think Darnold holds off JJ McCarthy the entire year. Um, so that could be a not great run out for Aaron Jones though. Darnold did lead to McCaffrey, some of his best years. So you could see some meaningful check downs for Jones. They still have Ty Chandler. They like Ty Chandler. So I think that kind of hurts the Jones workload. If I had to guess, I think Aaron Jones becomes kind of a one-to-one -one with what he was in Green Bay the last few years, where probably still a very efficient player, probably still very good, probably still the one you want to see on the field, but they can't keep him on the field uh, quite as long. Uh, Travioli, so this, is, this is is how bad it is for Travioli. Pick 80 for Deontay Johnson is not what you want to be doing at this point in the draft. So that is that was not the right way for him to handle uh, his various pockets. 
We need running backs. Um, Spears obviously going the wrong way. Tony Pollard theoretically coming up here. No other obvious correlations. We are going to take Tony Pollard with his fat new contract. I do not like that one. Do not like that one. Again, he started running less though. Like I don't want guys that are going to make business decisions on running and maybe that'll change in the NFL. But if he's a guy that's making a business decision based on the running for the most part in like his last year in college, he's going to make a decision about his entire rookie contract too, to some extent, like he's still going to run here and there and I'm sure it'd be okay, but he wasn't as good of a runner as Jane Daniels anyway. Like, I, I don't know. Drake May's fine. Like he's, he's an okay prospect. I don't want to sound like I'm down on him necessarily, but like, he's not as good as Jane Daniels and he's definitely not as good as Caleb Williams in terms of being a pocket passer. He's just a willing deep ball thrower who should be running more. If he ran more, if he ran to a level from his second to last year and his last year, I'd be a little more into that, but you know, guys change their habits over the course of time and guys who, you know, unfortunately who are like being the smartest about maximizing their financial potential. Um, they might not run as much and he actively did that. Mix it to the Texans. That's a big one. That is a big one. I kind of thought the Ravens were a sneaky candidate to steal Mixon away. Um, don't know you want Mixon in your locker room, to be honest. But um, yeah, Henry of the Ravens seems impossible. I would agree. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, Bears are the only team in the NFL that's never had a 4,000 yard passer. It's got to happen at some point. It's not, it's not like there's you know, a gravitational force that's keeping them from doing it. It's their own ineptitude in terms of uh, generating talent and, and you know rearing it in the right way. And at a certain point, they're going to get that right. All right, so we got Walker Pollard. I really don't know that Eckler is a better pick than Brian Robinson. Kind of think that Brian Robinson, a better sledgehammer back. They did pay Eckler decently, though. He's going to get used. Oh, man. Not my favorite. I'll take Eckler. I guess we're just scooping up the free agent guys that I find passable at this point. So, teams so far, uh, we have Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard, Austin Eckler, Amon Ross St. Brown, Nico Collins, Malik Neighbors, T. Higgins, and Brian Thomas Jr. is our team so far. And Mixon, you could see, excitedly taken by Don't Impede My Status at Pick 87. I'm sure hearing that news item on social media. Yeah, they said they did announce that they had cut Mixon, but it's possible that they hadn't actually filed it, and then now they're trading him because the Texans came in and said, hey, we would trade for him. But I I find that hard to believe that the Texans, like, they have so much cap room, maybe. But like, if you're trading for Mixon, you have to pay him 10 mil, whereas if you let the Bengals cut him, you're probably getting him for like five. So that seems kind of stupid. Pocket pass like Drake May shouldn't look to run. It's just nice he has ability. I don't know why you think he's like a great pocket passer. He was less efficient than the other guys by pretty wide margins last year. Um, again, he's just a willing downfield thrower, which is uh, which is a good skill to have. Let's see. Uh, let's look at his numbers. So a, a, a pocket passer like Drake May. 61% on target rate for Drake May would be the worst out of every rookie on my sheet. That includes guys like Cam Rising, Will Howard, Jordan Travis, Quinn Ewers, Sam Hartman, Devin Leary, Penix. Uh, so if you're, if you're pocket passer... As a 61% on target rate, he shouldn't be a pocket passer. And like, end of story. Like, that's a that's like a Jake. Our guy Felix compared Bo, Bo Nix, who couldn't be less uh, Jake Locker, but compared him to Jake Locker. Drake May, that completion numbers, the, the catchable ball rate, 76.5%. We're talking like AR level, Jake Locker level. So that, like, that's that, that's your pocket passer. It's not good. Not not a good pocket passer. He's, he, he's at his best being Josh Allen. Bootleg Josh Allen. But like that's an egregiously bad catchable ball rate on target rate. For comparison's sake, too, because I always should do that. Jane Daniels, seventy four percent on target rate, eighty five percent catchable ball rate. JJ McCarthy, eighty six percent catchable ball rate, uh, seventy three percent on target rate. Bo Nix, seventy seven percent on target, eighty eight percent catchable ball rate. Kale Williams, uh, on target lower than you'd like to see, sixty seven percent, but again, still much higher than Drake May and seventy nine percent catchable ball rate. Drake may regress in every possible way this year. Like he, he wasn't as good. The only thing he did was just chuck it, which, which is fine. Cause we like that for fantasy in terms of real life football. Egregious. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's true. May is still QB three. He's just like, he's QB three to me. I think he's an obvious QB three, but we'll see. Uh, the commanders may disagree and he's younger than Daniels too. So he's got that. 
Texas got zero RBs they won yesterday. Trading means they don't get spag sniped again. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, I think they also could have been doing the smart thing and just waiting for the price tag to come where they want it to go. And I would, I think that would be a logical thing to do, but perhaps not. Perhaps not. Pick coming up here once Travioli figures out what's going on in his life. This is the worst five wide receivers ever. He does take Chase Brown, who I would have been happy to take here, which is fine. Um, I'll go Javante for RB4. Got to figure out wide uh, QB at some point, but we're doing it. Four running backs, five wide receivers so far. Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard, Austin Eckler, Javante Williams. For Pollard and Eckler, I think they come up a little bit in ADPs for their free agent landing spots, but probably not a lot. I think it's just they're going to go somewhere because people know they're going to go somewhere. Uh, Javante Williams, obviously nothing has changed for Denver at all. Denver, eerily quiet besides Jerry Judy trade. Uh, Washington, um, we'll see what happens with Eckler, but obviously that's the running back room. Wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, Nico Collins, Malik Neighbors, T. Higgins, and Brian Thomas Jr. I don't hate it. I think we got a pretty deep running back room. This is probably your best shot to get a deep running back room right now because just the certainty of these guys going somewhere is going to drive their ADPs up. Um, we saw again, Derrick Henry hasn't signed. He goes 10 picks after ADP. Um, that's how it goes. Uh, Trey Franklin would have picked 90 here. I'd say a reasonable pick by OMG. So for all of you guys out there who do Troy Franklin watch, a reasonable spot for Troy Franklin today. 11 and 19 as a starter. Wins are a team stat, but it's not great. Patrick Holmes did not suck at football in college. The team did that. Wait, where did this one come up? Oh, this is what Jeff was saying. Uh, look, you know, the baits in the chat is always glad to see him. Caleb Williams goes pick 109 here. Solid pick. I have no beef with it. See a couple interesting things on the board that we could do. One of them just went. I was willing to take Trey Benson as my RB5 here, especially given the vet glut that we have overall. Uh, Ty Chandler definitely going to be going down. Not a guy I would reach for here at running back. Uh, Justin Fields, again, the job status seems like the Raiders chose Gardner Minshew over him. Not a good thing for Justin Fields. Do you think Justin Fields would not be the kind of QB Sean Payton theoretically wants, but maybe live for Denver just because they have to get somebody there. Um, and at this point, the cost is coming down. I'm going to take Jared Goff though. We took a Monra round one. We will take Jared Goff along for the ride uh, with a Monra and hopefully figure out some better players on the way back. Jared Goff at QB, Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard, Austin Eckler, Javante Williams at running back, wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, Nico Collins, Malik Neighbors, T. Higgins, and Brian Thomas Jr. And he Disley love when punting tight end. I They brought him... Wait, so Disley is going to... He's going to the Chargers, right? No, fucking... The other one's going to the Chargers. Where's Disley going? No, Disley's going to the Chargers. Where's Colby Parkinson going? Because Colby signed somewhere too, right? Rams, okay. Rams are going. So yeah, more of a blocking move than anything. Uh, all the Rams moves so far have been meant to shore up the blocking. So Disley's okay. Like Disley's biggest skill as a tight end is just ruining other guys' good passing days and occasionally maybe having like one spike week a year. So Disley, he's kind of like Josh Oliver was last year where you could talk me into taking one or two, but... If I had to guess, I think they upgrade that position. I think they add a rookie. Um, so Disley's, yeah, Disley's okay. It's that offense not is not going to pass a lot. And Disley is already not a high target earner. So, like, what's he going to do, really? Where will Gasicki get steamed up to? Gasicki paid nothing. He's getting paid nothing. He's definitely an upgrade on Tanner Hudson. He's a better version of Tanner Hudson as being, in terms of being a pass catcher. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, Jane Daniels goes 118 was hoping that he would come back to me so I could talk myself into some logic as to where he's going to go and taking him there. But Jane Daniels, 118, still a great pick to me. And still one of the most undervalued picks probably overall. Brissette to New England on a backup level contract though, uh, probably still means New England taking a top three QB or maybe a Bo Nix, Bo Nix, Spencer Rattler type end of the first round, second round somewhere, maybe. But I think New England brings in a rookie. Brissett competes with the rookie. If the rookie's good, Brissett's the backup. If the rookie's not good, Brissett gets a shot to hold on to the job uh, while the rookie comes along and maybe doesn't ever come along. Battle between O'Connell and Minshew for Las Vegas QB is so mid. 
Yeah, I mean, it's honestly wouldn't be a shocker if O'Connell could win the job just because he at least forced the ball downfield a little bit more aggressively. Um, I'm happy for Minshew getting another contract. Thought he did the best he could holding down the fort for the Colts, even though he was like a very obvious downgrade you know, for the ceiling of that team last year. Uh, for Minshew, though, I don't know. I'm not that mad at it. But then last year, Brissett got 12 mil guaranteed and Howell start the, like won the starting job. I know it's a difference of 3 million, but it's close enough that I, I, I wouldn't say that for sure. Especially with a guy like Antonio Pierce. Um, don't be the kind of guy that's going to reward the guys in the locker room, I think, who backed him. Obviously, you know, it's going to come down to talent. Like if Minshew's world's better than O'Connell, uh, Minshew's going to win the job. But if they give it's one-to-one, I, I just wouldn't rule out O'Connell there. I, I wouldn't feel great taking either guy, to be honest. Um, if you're going to give the assignment, though, of just like feeding Devontae Adams and not fucking up the defense, like Vinci is probably the guy you'd want more. If you want to have an actual, you know, upside potential, you play the younger guy and hope they can get there. But Aiden O'Connell, I, I don't think has a ton of upside. Other signings, uh, Gus Edwards to the Chargers. I have to give our guy Tyler, of course, the emo cowboy. His flowers there. A couple of weeks ago, we debated Kenny Pickett, or not Kenny Pickett, Kenneth Gainwell. <laughs> Kenneth Gainwell versus Gus Edwards. I don't think Kenny Pickett versus Gus Edwards. I guess it would be a debate. I don't know how it would make the most sense. Uh, but Gus Edwards getting the spot as the goal line back, potentially for the Chargers. Probably going to bring somebody else in, but that is a nice role for a power-dominant offense. Gus Edwards relative to ADP and where he's going to free agency. Not a great contract, only like 3.5 million guaranteed, but he that's cheap enough too that he could just get there out of inertia. Uh, so if he doesn't get unseated right now, Gus Edwards is a pretty nice pick. 1450 here is the situation. Oof, we could use a tight end. And I, you know what? I still like Luke Musgrave. I think he's a little bit undervalued. I'm going to go Luke Musgrave here to get my first tight end off the board. No correlation for me, but Musgrave, I just think, breaks out next year. Another year of experience, Jordan Love's growth, a, a now a meaningful running back threat who's hopefully going to be healthy and able to be in there, um, even though Jacobs, again, really was much worse this past year than he was the year before last, where he was actually avoiding tackles, creating value after the tackle. Uh, this past year, Josh Jacobs was at a... Negative 0.15 EPA per rush, negative 0.06 EPA per pass. 12% uh, avoided tackle rate is like a third of where he was the year before last. Jacobs doesn't have a lot of juice left, uh, personally is my belief, but I would say in this offense, it's such a good offense and Jordan Love's going to be ascendant. And those wide receivers getting older, getting more experience are going to be ascendant. That Josh Jacobs is just luck box and probably the best spot for him um, as long as he can keep being this half-assedly good. Uh, Marvin Mims, one guy who I feel like hasn't taken a huge ADP leap upwards. I guess has come up a couple dozen spots, but I think should be going closer to Josh Downs right now. Marvin Mims was directly said at the combine by Sean Payton that he's basically was being blocked by Jerry Judy. Jerry Judy's gone now. There's nothing blocking Marvin Mims from getting on the field. Mims is also pretty efficient last year in terms of what he did. Uh, let's confirm that though. 0.22 EPA per target, only a 15% target route run rate is not great, but did get targeted a lot downfield and would expect that to level out a little bit more with some of those Judy routes. Uh, to me, I think that with the upside and with the role right now, um, assuming that they don't bring in somebody else, uh, or if they do bring in somebody else, it's like because they got rid of Sutton. Mims, to me, I think is a really strong play. It's him and Tim Patrick most likely there right now. And then you got to assume they add somebody in the draft. Henry has to go to Dallas, right? I, Baltimore has been the pick for a while. I think it's Baltimore, uh, but we'll see. Baltimore was in on somebody. I forget who it was, but uh, did not go that way. Uh, one, four, five, one here. QB getting kind of bled out. Well, you know what? No, I still need a, I think I need a fifth running back more than I need. Mm. Oh, I'm going to take Drake May. God damn it. After I find like I land on a credible reason to not like Drake May that much after Al pushed my buttons and made me look up numbers. Uh, again, Drake May for fantasy, though, I think has real issues at QB in terms of like that's a really low like catchable ball rate, a really low on target rate. Not a great sign. What he does have going for him does Drake May 16.7% deep throw rate throws to 20 plus air yards, only a 0.7 EPA there. So by comparison, Drake, Caleb Williams. 1.3 EPA per target. Jane Daniels, 1.6 EPA per target downfield. Those guys are roughly two to almost three X better of a downfield passer than Drake May. But the willingness to do it is the key stat. And again, for Drake May as a rusher, 
Uh, he was a 0.5 EPA per rush guy, but was down to only 6.8 rushes a game. So expect him as a pro to run like Josh Allen when we were really frustrated that Josh Allen didn't run enough in games uh, early last year. That would be my expectation for Drake May. Uh, Fields looking like this year's Trey Lance, probably going to be a backup somewhere. I don't get like, you know, again, I, I think for the offense that Minnesota runs, I get why you go Sam Darnold and Sam Darnold. The, the last stretch that he had when he was the Panthers starter was actively pretty good. Like I know people are going to be like, no, it's not correct. I remember it vividly. Cause I remember talking to our football outsiders guys back in the day about that. And like the six games that Sam Darnold had to close out that Panther season were like one of the top DVOA performances by QB ever. And, and, you know, like, does it matter for everything? No, is it small sample size, blah, blah, blah. Like Darnold has been a lot of good stops now, learning from a lot of good guys. Um, he's bros with Josh McCown, who's now going to be his odds of coordinator um, or QB coach. I forget what the title is. But for, you know, for Sam Darnold, like this is a pretty good run out for him, getting Justin Jefferson, getting Jordan Addison, getting Hawkinson, hopefully at some point next year, probably not a lot of it, but at some point, um, getting a good running game going with Aaron Jones. Um, and Darnold, again, fed McCaffrey well in Carolina. So the Aaron Jones check down should be there or Ty Chandler ones if Jones gets hurt. Um, Jefferson, we know, can do a lot with 10 mediocre targets. And Darnold is better than mediocre, I think. I think he's like an actual pro QB. Um, so I don't know, man. I think the Minnesota thing, people are not going to flock to it. There's the risk. They bring in J.J. McCarthy and McCarthy starts at some point. But I think that for right now, I'd be pretty okay if I get Jefferson, take Darnold in the, what, the 18th, 19th? Right now, Darnold's got a, an undrafted ADP at 239, basically. So I think Darnold should be getting drafted if you have Vikings. I would take that flyer as a QB3. Wouldn't do him in a Q, uh, 2QB build. Uh, the So the thing with like the Cowboys this year, apparently, is that they're really trying to, to stick to the thing of that um, that championship to one in the draft in April. Basically, this is what the beat reporter from the, uh, I forget which one it was, but one of the Cowboys beat reporters was saying is basically like clearly a thing the team is feeding him to be putting out there. Again, this is how this all this shit works, which you guys know, hopefully uh, by this point. But the Cowboys, you know, like not overspending in free agency and all that. Not that they have a lot of cap room anyway, because of the DAC extension looming over them. They don't have a lot of flexibility, but this is a good sign for them to not do that. Like they had a good team last year. Um, you don't need to go swing right away. They don't need DeAndre Swift. Like they, if they get Rico Dowdle and Jonathan Brooks, people like going there. I think that would be an okay one. Obviously with the knee risk, we'll see how that would affect his ramp up. Uh, Audrick Estime, if he goes to Dallas, he'd be a fucking monster. If, if Bucky Irving and his uh, 3.5 RAS go to Dallas, they would figure it out for him too. So um, for Dallas, there's still a lot of outs there. And just because he didn't do anything, I don't think um, is a bad sign. Two, four, five, one. Uh, at a certain point, we do need to get some more wide receivers, but I think for me, Michael Mayer's going to be well targeted. I would think by Gardner Minshew next year. Um, I don't believe Austin Hooper is under contract, but even if he is, he, Mayer did start to pass him last year. Let me make sure of that. The yeah, Austin Hooper free agent. So Michael Mayer to me, I think actually quietly got a pretty nice upgrade. If it's O'Connell coming back, fine. You know, if O'Connell can win that job, that probably means he improved meaningfully. If it's Minshew coming in there, Minshew's going to love checking down him a lot. Obviously, a lot more targets could be going DeAndre Hopkins' way. It's going to be goal number one, but that's it. Moody to the Falcons, his stock up. Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> his stock up a little bit, but I, I wouldn't lock in that he's going to be like wide receiver to getting meaningful work. Um, definitely possible he's in the hunt there, but if I'm the, if I'm the Falcons and you have this draft class, I would take a flyer on a rookie at wide receiver too. And any of the rookies they take who are downfield threats, even if it's like a Roman Wilson tear, even if it's a Vlad McConkie tier, those guys are all better than Darnell Mooney. I would not overreact to that. I would, I would, I wouldn't overreact to Mooney anywhere unless he, unless he was paid a lot more money than I would expect. If he was paid Gabe Davis money at something, I imagine he signed. I again, I'm doing the stream right now. I imagine he signed for like what two, three mil, maybe a little bit more because he's a wide receiver. Uh, Gus Edwards going to 157, probably a fair price tag for him. 
Uh, nice little run for Alex P. Keaton here. I like the value that he took on Ty J. Spears. Also, they're getting Zach Moss here. Not a big Jaleel McLaughlin guy, but at 156, not a bad price tag. Gus Edwards, Zach Moss, definitely two of the free agent winners right now in terms of where they were previously going. Um, and Gus seems like up 50 spots already in ADP. So there we go. Jay, I appreciate you, man. I'm a, your enthusiasm brings me a lot of joy that you are reading this very incorrectly. <clears throat> two, four, five, two. See what we got to do here. We need more wide receivers. And honestly, do you think Wandale undervalues a wide receiver? Uh, the concern for him is, again, losing some of those overall reps to uh, Jalen Hyatt. Supposedly going to play out of the slot a little bit more. Three years, 39 million. But again, it's not guaranteed money. It's one. It's probably like one year guaranteed for 13? That's a lot for Mooney. I'll give you that. It's a lot for Mooney. But it's, I still wouldn't think it's everything. That's a baffling fucking contract for Mooney. Mooney was so actively bad last year. He was good the year before last, so maybe they're just going to throw Justin Fields under the bus. But that's that's like overpaying for somebody just because you got just to do it. Okay, I don't. I I hope Adams reports are correct here. That's a that's way too much money for Mooney. Like that's what I that's what Ridley should be getting honestly based on how Ridley played last year. Whatever. I mean, look, you got, again, you get the new QB in. I think things start looking a little more fun. You want to spend some money, but that's, I don't know, man. That's the kind of contract that like, if they, again, they could draft literally any rookie of this class. They could draft AD Mitchell. They could draft Xavier Worthy. They could draft McConkey. I'm just going to name names that I would, that I would say are better players than Darnell Mooney right now. Uh, let me, hold on. I'm loading my sheet here so I can just spout off wide receivers so they could draft marvin harrison they could draft remo dunze they could draft malik neighbors uh keon coleman lateral move uh they could draft malik washington they could draft adonai mitchell they could draft malachi corley uh, not a downfield guy i guess i would take mooney over him uh they could draft xavier worthy they could draft lad mcconkey they could draft troy franklin they could draft they could draft johnny wilson they could draft xavier leggett they could draft ryan thomas they could draft jalen polk they could draft Taj Washington. They could draft Tez Walker. They could draft Brendan Rice. They could draft Roman Wilson. They could draft Ricky Pearsall. All of those guys are better than Darnell Mooney right now. Stupid. Stupid signing. Stupid signing. No, personally. Where is Fields going to end up? Uh, I I still think Denver's live. I, I think the thing with Sean, with, uh, not, with, with Sean Payton in general is that like, so he remember the Taysom Hill thing? Like, isn't Justin Fields just Taysom Hill? Maybe, I mean, there probably aren't even that different in accuracy stats. So isn't literally just like, are they the same play? Why is he not going after Justin Fields? It kind of confuses me. Obviously, historically in his actual QB, like Sean Payton wants a guy who's going to keep the machine running and hit those check downs, going to keep some short throws in there. So that's why Bo Nix has been the one that made, has made the most sense to me overall for them. And frankly, a Darnold might have made sense as well. You know, a QB with some experience, you can get the timing down and be good at that stuff. Um, but Bo Nix is basically like a veteran QB coming in as a rookie. Um, he's just, you know, not the most exciting, but he knows an offense. He ran Oregon beautifully last year. And again, threw a lot of catchable balls, a lot of on-target balls. That's what Sean Payton likes. So I get that, but like, I don't know, like Justin Fields could, you could maybe, maybe you could save him. And honestly, at this point, I guess, well, if they did get fields and then they salvage fields, then they're paying a lot of money at QB with the Russ fucked up contract. <laughs> and then with fields, if they had to pay him. So I guess that would be the one uh, team thing. Cause when you are talking about team moves, and this has been something that I've seen people post a lot about on Twitter that people sometimes miss. It's not about just the one V one of like Justin Fields versus Bo Nix, or even versus like a Jared Stidham. It's about what does it take to get Justin Fields versus what does it take to get Bo Nix versus what does it take to just keep Jared Stidham? And is the upgrade for those guys worth the upgrade over Jared Stidham? You know, that's the stuff that might be an issue. <laughs> this is all right. If you're talking about Moody, this is one of the worst takes. <laughs> Did Addison even hit a thousand yards last year? And Addison is unequivocally a better player than Mooney. Uh, two, four, six, two. I mean, Herbert going for free at this point, I, I don't think is a bad pick. Uh, really, wide receiver is just a disaster. I'm gonna take Herbert again. I think he gets released. And he's got enough juice as a runner that I'll take that flyer at 177 uh, when the alternative is Eli Mitchell. 
No, he's not. He's not anymore. He was the year before last. This year, everything went to shit for him. When there was an actual receiver out there to be a wide receiver one, he wasn't able, able to earn targets at all when he wasn't there. The, like, I don't know, whatever, man. I, I didn't know we had a Darnell Mooney hive, but he's objectively, was especially as a downfield receiver. So, all right, Dar Darnell Washington, don't want to look at his numbers. Darnell Mooney, a negative 0.16 EPA per target. And that's with an A dot of 11 yards per target. It's like you're talking about a guy who's getting throws past the sticks on every target, and he still was not a positive UK receiver. When basically, if you catch a ball 11 yards downfield with enough frequency, you're going to be a positive receiver because of the fact you're advancing and creating another set of downs. So, like the fact that he wasn't, and that's his average, is like a really bad sign. But again, if you want to blame Fields for that, I get it. But like, really, the guys who benefit in Atlanta are not, are one, two, three. It's London, it's Pitts, it's Bijan. That's it. Like, and maybe. Algier is like a one C to that, but like, even then probably not that much in this offense. Dude, get the fuck out of here. What? Like don't fucking come into my channel here. Be one of the fucking losers who downvotes videos. <laughs> you're a fucking nobody. And you get, gave a bad take and I corrected you. Sorry. You're stupid. Uh, two, five, six, two. <laughs> I like this. Is, I'm a victim of my own success. I fucking, and by the way, Mooney fans, that's, that's your fucking guy. That's your peer who you'll never see on splash play again. What a fucking idiot, man. <laughs> like you give somebody numbers and they lash out, like just duck and quit it. Just quit it. This is why, guys, like I'm forever going to be stuck getting fucking 500 views a video because I would rather fucking not have people like that watch a single thing I do. Like if you're just going to be a willful idiot who then lashes out and probably has like real serious anger issues if you're lashing out on me. Like I'm just a person who doesn't care about you past making one minute of content. But like, you know, it's just like I just don't need it. I just don't need it. Oh, God. Man for life, you're pushing it, bud. <laughs> uh, what if Fields is bad because Darnell Moody is absolute dog shit? Possibility. But yeah, Moody just, like, I remember, and I particularly find Moody to be an egregious thing because, like, he was good the year before last. You know, he was good the year before last because, like, he was the top target. Like, that was it, um, which is not a great sign. <clears throat> yes, I think you guys specifically should chase Moody. I think that guy, Miles, here, um, who I'm sure he's going to have a great time bringing a lot of value to other draft streams. Um, he can go draft Mooney in the fifth round, and I, I think he should go for it. As a stupid nobody, LS Flash, but thank God. That's all I can ever ask. Yeah, if you're a stupid nobody here, and you're at least like slightly less toxic than that dude, dude <laughs> please hit the journey, hit the join button, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, come along for the ride here. But but really, if you're going to be a dick, just like don't, I, I guess. Like really, don't don't click the stream. Just go away. <laughs> Fucking A, man. <laughs> yeah, now now it's like the fight club scene where everybody's a stupid nobody. We are we are all Miles. He's not like Miles, by the way. Um cool, coolest Miles, obviously Miles Davis. You know, I think we could go that. Um, I'd rather have Tails from Sonic the Hedgehog. I'd rather have Miles Seller. I'd rather have Darius Miles. The stupid squirts. Thank you. Yes, that's you all support the stupid nobodies. You're all stupid nobodies. This is how I patrol the room. What? This is what I do. This is how I keep things clean. If I don't protect this community, who will? Atlanta really paid 26 million guaranteed. Yeah, look, you know. Again, it's really just that the drunk enthusiasm of finally having a QB, having your new Matt Ryan. And frankly, you know, is Kirk Cousins a little bit better than Matt Ryan in terms of his ability to create value for an offense? I think so. Is Kirk Cousins going to make a Super Bowl for Atlanta? A little bit less sure about that. But I but I think for Kirk, you know, for the fantasy output, you know, well, you have to keep in mind, this, guy, this is an older guy coming off an Achilles tear. And we you just see, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Achilles tear, old guy. Maybe a little more risk in the situation than I think we're accounting for. But I get the enthusiasm. I'm excited for Atlanta. They got they hired the right coaches. 
they brought in good guys to make, get the most out of these talents uh, that they've invested so much at high draft capital skill positions. So they did the thing. Falcons, it doesn't mean anything now. They have a new team, but I mean, there's going to be still, like, there's still a good shot they like to run the ball because they're bringing Rams principles over and the Rams do want to run the ball. They want to have a run game that sets up the pass game and a pass game that sets up the run game, which is what good teams do. So if they do it the right way, then it'll be good. But I still just don't think it's going to lead to like, you know, the Darnell Mooney renaissance. This is what happens in free agency. You end up, tell, you end up talking yourself into Darnell Mooney. I get it. All right, we made the bet on two Giants, so we are just going to take Daniel Jones as QB3 here. Not the most fun pick, but it's still a guy that can't escape the pup list, and the Giants likely contractually tied to him. I don't know. Not the most fun pick for sure, but Daniel Jones, when you have Jalen Hyatt, when you have Wandale Robinson, in a 20-round draft, QB3, that works. Sick chat. What? <laughs> I'm glad free agency is going on. We're getting lots of great minds in chat again. <laughs> we've been having a lot. I know, guys, we've been having a lot of fun talking about different players, analyzing different takes, but now we're getting chats like that. Now we're getting Darnell Moody enthusiasts and chats like that. Boy, I'm in heaven doing drafts every day. Chunk the Deuce says he fell apart this draft. Too many hits this morning, I think. Uh, hopefully it doesn't show in my umpiring later. Oh, you better fucking, you better call those balls and strikes correctly, my friend. Jay, 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 I, Jay, you draft good teams. I, I don't, you, you need to workshop the take game a little bit more, Jay. <laughs> I appreciate it. Jay's for, for what it's worth has been sending me his screenshots. I think does a lot, a good job in a lot of drafts. Uh, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Where did Saquon go in the draft? He went at pick 22. So basically where he's been going all along. Don't think he's going to come up, but I think he more reliably goes here to here instead of the few times where you've seen him go in the third round. One time on the stream, we did see him go and pick 43. Uh, don't think that'll happen anymore, even though it probably should, given that a reminder, last year DeAndre Swift was going in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and I don't think they're different plays. I think they're very similar plays. Uh, three, five, seven, two here. Well, for right now, Justice Hill, the only running back in Baltimore still who is healthy and able to go in week one. So we're going to take Keaton Mitchell for one more share. Three, six, seven, two, two more picks to make. Uh, Jared Goff, Drake May, Daniel Jones at running back, Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard, Austin Eckler, Javante Williams, Khalil Herbert, and Justice Hill. Uh, obviously, I like the base of the top four. These two guys were just values. It's really not a great running back room in that back part. Wide receiver, Amon Ross St. Brown, Nico Collins, Malik Neighbors, T. Higgins, Brian Thomas Jr., Wandale Robinson, Jalen Hyatt, and a tight end, Luke Musgrave and Michael Mayer. Might need a third tight end. Probably could use a seventh running back. Don't think we need a fourth QB. Yeah, I like the wide receivers. Like the early start at running back. Don't hate tight end, but... Draft could have been better. Want to bet my guy tight end doesn't make it back to me. We'll see. We'll see. There's now, you know, got Yoshivis going earlier. We'll, we'll figure it out. But there are a lot of guys who are friends and family here who might enjoy a certain tight end. It was a rookie that I enjoy. <laughs> yeah, if you want to put that into context, Mooney just earned $1.25 million per reception he had last year. I, the biggest thing for Mooney to me too is like, Whatever you want to say about Justin Fields, and again, the real life parts of it, I get being critical of that. But like Justin Fields did create spike weeks multiple times for Cole Komet, did create outlandish spike weeks multiple times for DJ Moore. To where was the spike week for Darnell Mooney? Like where where was the upside at all? But who knows? Maybe Kirk Cousins was like, hey, bring in Darnell Mooney. Like, I really, I like what I've seen from that guy the two times a year that we've played. Did Darnell Mooney have an outlier day versus Minnesota within the last couple of years? Maybe. Because that is some aged QB shit to do, including what we saw last year with Aaron Rodgers and uh, Dalvin Cook. It's like, oh, I've seen this guy play, man. I've played against him a lot. He's a, he's a competitor. We got to get him in. And then they bring him in. And it's like, oh, wait, what? <laughs> he's, not, he's, he's actually not good you mean he was only good in a small sample size and that's why i thought he was good oh you mean i should have watched the other 16 games to, to see how how not good he was against every other team oh oops 
Claypool over Mooney. That's tough. At least Mooney can get downfield. But but Claypool's apex was better. I'll give you that. Thoughts or takes on Emmanuel Wilson? Mostly dead. Uh, he is probably change of pace back at best for when Josh Jacobs wants to sit. Uh, he, I mean, Jacobs is going to get, he's going to get the work. Uh, so I, I don't think Wilson I was never a big Wilson guy, but I thought there was a shot if they just didn't add anybody and brought Jones back, maybe he can get there. Uh, I guess the plus side would be that he's probably a better pass catcher than Josh Jacobs. Though at this point, Jacobs is a better pass catcher than he is a rusher. So I, I don't really, I don't see much for Wilson, but I'm also not a big Wilson guy as my priors. Johnny Wilson getting any steam in these drafts lately? No, because he's like the one player people don't want to take because they think he's going to be a tight end, even though he doesn't want to play tight end. Uh, but we'll see. Not a lot of track record for guys being 6'7 and good at wide receiver in the pros. Uh, but Johnny Wilson was good at FSU, tested well at the combine. Obviously, relative guys that size, a great athletic score. So we will see for him. I wouldn't hate it. Yeah, I mean, the, the deal they gave to Josh Jacobs is like pure bell cow deal. Um, and obviously, that's that's Jacobs' value is that he can take all the touches. He's not going to kill you on any of them. Uh, but, you know, he's just not as good as other guys. And for them, I don't know they need him to be as good as other guys. They just need him to kind of be, you know, functional in a Jordan Love offense and to take the pressure off Jordan Love. And I think he can do that. And he's going to block well. He's going to pass protect pretty well. All right, 3672 here. I don't know if this is a good move or a bad move to take Tucker Craft here. I also think, I still think Davis Allen is a good pick. He was a really good pass catcher filling in for Higby last year. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Davis Allen here. Uh, for the sake of the numbers, again, Davis Allen last year, small sample size, only played a couple games when Higby got hurt. But 0.77 EPA per target, 17% target per hour run rate. Um, he was in, He was involved. He was involved, honestly, more than Higby was. I think Al Allen, to me, out of all the guys who kind of came on late that people just didn't pay enough attention to, Allen was the one who I was probably the most impressed by that I just had no priors on. Um, really like Davis Allen. <clears throat> Jacob's nuclear season incoming, I, I think that's very much possible. And he doesn't, like, the thing is, he really doesn't even have to be that good. He just has to get the volume. Does AZ Perry do anything for me? Yeah, he was one of the most efficient receivers in football last year in terms of EPA. Um, things are going to get better for him with no Michael Thomas. Obviously, he does have big target earners alongside him. Chris Olave, big target earner. Um, certainly, Rashid Shahid, a downfield target, takes some away. But Perry at pick 226, like he's probably getting all the snaps. Uh, ben Sinnott goes. Obviously, I took Allen over him, so I can't be mad about that. But Ben Sinnott, the rookie that I'm comfortable with. And Gasicki here, going to the Bengals, not a bad pick at pick 231. All right, what helps you the most here? Like, I don't think I need a wide receiver eight. RB7. Could be okay, but like, what are we even doing at RB7 at this point? Eric Gray, less value now with Singletary coming in. I think I'm just going to close the loop on Green Bay tight end and just hope I can get some tight end spike weeks from Jordan Love. Final team here, Jared Goff, Drake May, Daniel Jones, Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard, Austin Eckler, Javante Williams, Khalil Herbert, and Justice Hill at running back. Uh, Mon Ross, St. Brown, Nico Collins, Malik Neighbors, T. Higgins, Brian Thomas Jr., Wandale Robinson, Jalen Hyatt, wide receiver, the tight end, Luke Musgrave, Michael Mayer, Davis Allen, and Tucker Craft. Started it late, so we went with four there. I'm the guy with the Rams mega sack. He just sniped Allen. Well, take Colby Parkinson. <laughs> he's gonna go, he's gonna be there, Josh Oliver. So that's gonna pay off. Likes of everyone, show spags the channel some love. Yes, here I take the slings and arrows from randoms and weirdos every day in the name of drafts here for you guys. So please uh, do subscribe down below. Please hit that like button. Please leave a comment. Um, eh, well, we'll let. Do I need to let Chunk go? Uh, fuck, I don't care about Chunk's last pick. Sorry, Chunk. <laughs> please subscribe down below. Hit the like button again. Splash play drafts Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. And we do it here the best we can. Best info, best data, combining it all. And I'm not afraid to say shit you don't want to hear. Like, that is a promise. These The numbers I look at are the truth source. Even for guys like Al, like Al Paul, one of our regulars, who's very good at college football. I have to tell you what I see. And that's what the thing is here. If you want to still go and go nuts for Darn Darnell Mooney, like the Falcons did, then more power to you. But like, 
this should be a channel where you can't get fucking mad and act like and throw a bitch fit because I, I don't like Darnell Mooney. Like, please, please don't make that my daily life. But please do subscribe down below. Please hit the like button. Underdog, again, promo code splash on there. Double your deposits, 100 bucks. Stochastic. NBA was a lot of fun yesterday, even though the chalk, oh my God, Javon Freeman Liberty, the most WNBA name ever, kills 40% of lineups yesterday. That was awful, but the tools and data on Stochastic are great. So get 15% off with the promo code splash on there. Probably my oh, subscribe again. Probably my baby. Uh, results were probably real fast just because, like, this is the most insane run I think I've seen of any betting content creator that I've ever followed. It's me, it's 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 probably our date is crushing it. And that includes me blowing almost three units on parlay Saturday a couple weeks ago. But probably Zeta doing a good job. Get it for yourself at probably.com slash subscribe. Oh, uh, get 50% off with the promo code splash or get a seven day free trial on the app store. And I'll I'll link the description down below. And don't forget. Leave your rating and a review if you want to get a guest hosting spot on Splash Play uh, because I'm doing that giveaway on Friday on stream. So only a couple entries in right now. So if you want to get your shot, it's going to be the 15th or the, you know, the midpoint of every month. I'm going to do the giveaway for a guest hosting spot. So coming up on Friday will be that one. Join button. Um, if you are one of the people out there who enjoyed this stream, hit the join button. Great way to support the show. Again, I do this every day. It's I treat it like a job or it's like, you know, one of the two jobs I have. Uh, and that's what we do here every day. But these fine folks that we put on the show, you too can do that by hitting the join button now below for $4.99 a month. And you'll get my spags rankings coming up, which are really more, they're going to be practical rankings for underdog that you can like paste in, but also they're going to just going to be like a text product. You can read blurbs about every player, see the EPA metrics that I cite, Get your head around it in the way that I view it and then do what you want to do. That's always the game here. Uh, shout out to the chat. I see 20 to God. What did something else happen here? I see 22 chats, but appreciate all you guys being here. I even when guys are assholes, I do appreciate the enthusiasm. So if you have fun with uh, fantasy football, we do it here year round and we're going to do it again tomorrow at 11 a.m. So I'll see you guys then. Enjoy your days. Good luck. Bye.